Anyway, um, let's get started. Psalm 42. I'm going to open up in prayer and, uh, and then we will dive in. We'll read the whole thing and then we'll draw some conclusions just like we've been doing every single Thursday morning, guys. I pray that it's a blessing to you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you would use this word to encourage people today, that your spirit would encourage us through Psalm 42 and what you wrote here for us to discover. I pray that we would listen to the challenge, that we'd respond to it today, and that you would speak to us, each of us, just in the way that we need to be spoken to, Lord, with your perfect, perfect word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. Awesome. Missy says it's vitamin D. Awesome. Perfect. I was right on that front. Uh, so good morning, guys. Good morning, Chris. And here we go. Psalm 42. Psalm 42. I'm going to start in verse 1. And we're going to go right on down. Psalm 42. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from the Mount of Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love. At night his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior, and my God. This is the word of the Lord out of Psalm 42. So this psalm is one that I call, if I were to give it a subtitle, I would give it this subtitle. It's a psalm for the discouraged. If you have experienced discouragement recently, or you are discouraged right now for any number of reasons, this psalm is for you today. It's absolutely for you. Uh, it's for you even if you're not discouraged because guess what? One day you're going to face a discouragement and you're going to need the truth from this psalm. But this is a psalm for the discouraged. Those of us who have been going on in life and we encounter a discouraging circumstance, discouraging situation, could be a relationship that is in a discouraging place. Uh, you could be just discouraged based on what's happening in the world right now. Uh, you could be facing financial discouragement at the current moment. That's a very real thing for a whole lot of people. Facing financial uncertainty and discouragement in the current moment. You could be facing discouragement because you've got kids that aren't living for the Lord and are making decisions that are unwise. That could be discouraging for you. You could be discouraged because similar to the psalmist, uh, your relationship with God just isn't what it used to be. And that, that's what he's talking about here. That's his, that's his center of discouragement. Uh, as we read in this first section again, uh, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? And he says, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one. Um, sometimes we're discouraged because the current state of our lives is not what it was. Uh, recently, and we look back and we think, man, almost kind of longing for the good old days. Uh, for us here in 2020, the good old days is 2019, I think. Um, I think any of us, if we had a time machine, we'd come back to 2019 right now um, because, man, this is just, it can be a discouraging time to live in. And we think, man, what we used to have, we used to be able to go to the house of our God, we used to, be able to go to church, we used to, to go to, um, you know, my friend's house or whatever it is. And it's just a discouraging time. 
Whatever the source of discouragement is for you today, I want to give you one very, very simple prescription, okay? It's one simple prescription and it comes from two verses in this psalm, verse five and verse 11. And the verses are actually identical. So the reason why it's two verses is because they are the exact same thing. And the psalmist says it twice because he doesn't want us to miss it. God puts it in here two times because it's the truth that he wants us to focus on. And so the reality of the situation when we're in a state of discouragement is that our heart is speaking very loudly in that moment. It's almost deafening when you are discouraged to hear anything other than the, the news report from your heart, uh, the news report from 18 inches below your head. Um, it's very, very difficult to hear anything other than that and because of that, we can end up not only discouraged, we can end up in cycles of discouragement where we begin discouraged and then because our heart is so loud in the moment and it's difficult to crowd out that noise and hear much of anything else that um, we just end up perpetually discouraged for a long time, that can easily happen to us. And maybe it's happened to you. Listen to the psalmist in verse six where he says, my soul is downcast within me. Uh, deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. Verse seven, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. He's talking about overwhelming discouragement. He's talking about times where just like wave upon wave of the water, uh, he feels wave upon wave of discouragement. Uh, have you ever felt like this? Uh, swimming in the ocean is a crazy experience. I don't know if you've ever experienced it before, but I have on the shores of um, the Dominican Republic. I went uh, swimming in the ocean one time. And what's so interesting about it is that it is the, the power, the sheer power is unbelievable. It's overwhelming water power at the shoreline. And you get caught up in the, in the waves and I was thrown, and I'm, I'm, I'm not a small guy, I was thrown probably 30 or 40 feet from where I was um, <laughs> standing originally, and then with all kinds of pebbles and stones in my pockets and, you know, upside down, you know, 50 feet from where I originally was standing. That is the power of water. And the psalmist is drawing upon this image to tell us this is what it feels like when discouragement is overwhelming like waves of water and you end up in a cycle of discouragement because what is coming from your heart as far as how you're feeling about the situation is so incredibly loud. Um, verse nine, I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? It can feel like this. Um, it can feel like this <laughs> so often and we're afraid to say it, but just know that, uh, it's, it's okay to say it. God says it here. The, the, the psalmist says it. Why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning? Oppressed by the enemy. My bones suffer mortal agony. There's so many different sources of discouragement for him. So what's the prescription? Here we go. Verse 5 and verse 11. I'm going to read both of them. I'm just telling you, spoiler alert, they're the same verse. They're the same thing. It's just repeated, but it helps us to hear it twice. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for yet I will praise him, my Savior and my God. That's verse 5. Now let's jump to verse 11. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Sound familiar? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Okay, if, you've, uh, if you're looking at a physical copy of your, of your Bible, uh, just take, take a highlighter or, uh, or a pen or something like that and underline, um, put your hope in God. That, that line from verse 5 and do it again in verse 11. Put your hope in God. Okay, just do it. I'm going to do it right now. I've got arrows pointing to it already, but I'm going to underline it in my Bible and I will show you uh, that I did that so you know I'm not lying. It's going to look backwards to you, but there it is. Put your hope in God. Okay, this is the repeated focused phrase of truth in Psalm 42, a psalm for the discouraged. If you find yourself discouraged, what you're hearing from your heart is very loud. Here's the prescription, okay? You need to preach to your heart. Sounds kind of weird, but it's true. You need to preach 
to your heart. Um, you think, uh, preach to my heart, isn't that your job, Pastor Steve? <laughs> In part, yes, that's my job. Uh, like once or twice a week, it's my job. But the rest of the time, it's your job. It's your job to preach to your heart. Um, and here's why. In Psalm, or not Psalm, I'm sorry, in Jeremiah chapter 17, the Lord teaches us something very important about our hearts that we can't miss, okay? 17 verse 9 says this in Jeremiah, the heart is, do you know it? Deceitful above all things and beyond cure. It's sick. Who can understand it? The heart is deceitful above all things. Now, here's the question that I have for you. Who is your heart deceiving? It's you. Your heart is deceiving you. And this is really nothing new for us here. We, we, I think we understand that there are times where our heart's take on a situation is not the right take. In fact, I would say probably, I'm, I'm running at about a 90% clip right now, I think. About 90% of the time, my heart's take on a situation is not the right take. And usually that's how I first feel about something. And even if what I feel in my heart is valid and I should pay attention to it, it doesn't mean that what, my, what I'm feeling in my heart is true and I should listen to it. Here's something you don't want to miss. If you find yourself in perpetual cycles of discouragement, unable to capture the joy that God offers to us in the Christian faith as we follow Jesus even now, overwhelmed with anxiety, overwhelmed with all of these things, okay, this, what I'm going to say is going to sound like I'm, like I'm throwing something at you, and I'm not. I'm just telling you the truth. If you find yourself there consistently, chances are you're there because you're doing more listening to your heart than you are preaching to your heart. That's probably what's happening. There are times of discouragement in our lives, no doubt. There are times where we feel discouraged. There are times where discouraging things happen. But then there's times where we end up in cycles of discouragement, where wave after wave of discouragement is hitting us over and over and over again. Anxiety, all kinds of stress, all kinds of things. We can't get our head up above water long enough to claim any of the joy and peace that God offers us. And a lot of the times I've discovered with people and in my own life that when I'm there, it's because I'm listening to my heart more than I'm preaching to my heart. And I need to flip those two around. That's why he says it twice. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Notice who he's talking to. He's not talking to God. He's not talking to us. He's talking to himself. He said, well, you need to talk to yourself. Yes, I encourage talking to yourself. Actually, that's very important in the Christian faith. And we don't talk about it enough. You don't, you, you thought, well, I'm going to sound crazy. Well, now if you're doing it alone, okay, you need to talk to yourself. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? That's a sentence of, of skepticism. And what's so interesting about skepticism is that we, we tend to be skeptical of everything around us, right? I, I, I read things on Facebook right now and I'm skeptical about what I'm hearing, okay? That's natural. And to some extent, that's, that's a healthy response. I mean, we need to, we need to really <clears throat> uh, check our skepticism. You know, we can't just let it run rampant, but it's good to have a healthy skepticism about things that I see outside of myself. But we very rarely are skeptical about anything that we feel or think. You ever think about that? When was the last time that you sat down and you were skeptical about how you were feeling and thinking? I just had this happen this morning. Um, I, <coughs> I was talking with my wife and I realized through the course of our discussion this morning that I was not practicing this uh, this principle. I was not being skeptical of what I was feeling and thinking. I was just assuming that it was the correct take on the situation. And we do this a lot. And if we are in waves and waves of discouragement and anxiety, and we don't practice a healthy skepticism of what's going on in our heart, we can just buy that as the news of the day, as uh, the, the right take and look at it and say, this is discouraging. This is hopeless. There's no way this gets better. And we end up with another wave of discouragement. And so the first step here is of this prescription is to question your heart, question yourself, question your thoughts, question your feelings. Why, why am I downcast? 
Why am I so disturbed? These are healthy things to explore in prayer. Just say, why am I doing this? And then you begin the preaching. And here's, it's a one point sermon. Here's the preaching that you need to do to your heart. Put your hope in God. That phrase in the scripture here in Psalm 42 is not directed at us. It's directed at himself. The psalmist is saying this to himself. Why am I soul? Are you so downcast? Put your hope in God, soul. Put your hope in God, my heart. That's what he's saying. And this is what we need to do. And it's so, it's such a powerful principle that it's in this psalm twice. We have to be skeptical of what's going on inside of our own hearts. If we are not careful, then we will just assume that it's true and right because it's what we're feeling. We'll just assume it's true and right because it's what we're thinking. And we look in and we're discouraged at a situation because it's so incredibly discouraging. And yet, there are, there's more to it than what we can see. And we'll never see it if we don't understand that my deceitful heart can deceive me. And I need to ask it questions. I need to question my heart and then preach to it. Put your hope in God. Do this all the time and do it however you can. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this principle on Sunday. In Sunday's message, it's week one of our brand new teaching series called The Waiting Room. And believe it or not, this series was planned months ago (laughs) before. It was planned for these weeks months ago before any of this stuff happened, before anybody in China got sick, before anything went down, these weeks were planned this way. And, and because I'm not nearly that smart, I believe it's God who scheduled these messages this way so that we could be encouraged by them because I'm going through them and I'm encouraged by them. I'm challenged by them. And I'm going to talk about this principle more on Sunday. So you're going to want to tune in for that service. Um, you can go to shelbyroad.org uh, or you can go to youtube.com slash shelbyroad, 11 a.m. on Sunday. You're not going to want to miss that discussion as we continue this talk about the principle of preaching to your own heart. You will find yourself discouraged. And we open the door of discouragement and we look down the road of despair and we start to head down that road if we don't question what's going on in our heart and our minds and then preach to our hearts and minds Put your hope in God. I would even just do that today. You're finding yourself in a discouraging moment. You're finding yourself in a discouraging place. Um, or even, a play, even you can apply this to other feelings as well. You find yourself in an angry place. Finding yourself in an anxious place. Whatever it is. I would close your eyes in prayer. I would ask yourself this question. Why so downcast my soul? Put, just use that phrase right from God's word. Put your hope in God. You're discouraged? Okay. Preach the sermon. Put your hope in God. 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 Do this the way that the psalmist says to do this. Consistently, over and over and over again. You find yourself anxious, overwhelmed with anxiety, overwhelmed with anger, overwhelmed with negativity, overwhelmed with these things. Okay. Put your hope in God. Put your hope in God. Put your hope in God. Preach the sermon to your heart. Be skeptical of your own heart so that you are not skeptical about God's word and you can take it at face value. Skeptical of your own heart and preach that sermon. Put your hope in God. As I hope that this was encouraging, I hope it was challenging to you, and I hope that it's a tool for you to use the rest of this day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the truth we find in your word and in Psalm 42, the instruction we have to preach to ourselves. Lord, I pray that you would help all of us listening right now to do this today. As we find uh, different things going on in our heart, it tends to be very loud, discouragement, anxiety, stress, all of the things that are associated with life on earth, particularly right now. Pray that you help us to be healthily skeptical and preach to our own heart, Lord. Just say it. Oh, just help us say it. Put my hope in God. Put my hope in God. Pray that you help us to do this today and that it would build strength in our faith as we move forward in this difficult time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. Thanks for taking time and giving me a few moments on your Thursday morning. Time is precious. It's a precious commodity. I'm learning this more and more, and I so appreciate you taking the time to tune in today. I want to invite you to church this Sunday uh, at 11 a.m. Tune in Shelby Road Baptist Church online. You can find it at shelbyroad.org, or you can find it 
at youtube.com slash Shelby Road. And uh, we'd love to have you with us. We're gonna get started in week one of The Waiting Room. I'm very excited about this. And so I pray that it will be incredibly helpful, incredibly challenging to you and uplifting as well. Guys, love you, miss you. I will see you soon.